keep stepping forward in a positive direction. Hi. I'm a little older, and my memory is not so great anymore. So I took some notes. And uh, there will be a few sentences that I also need to read uh, because I want to be accurate with quotes. And the first quote that I will have to read is my own words <laughs> from uh, an exchange with NATO. When he invited me to come here today, I told him in an email what I could potentially speak about is how I taught in Cooper Union's art school undergraduate program and participated in the faculty's decision-making process. I cannot offer theories or guidelines. And NATO answered, that's perfect. <laughs> so it's all his fault if uh, this doesn't come out. <laughs> and now I have 10 minutes, no, less than 10 minutes. Uh, I was teaching at uh, Cooper Uni for uh, 35 years and uh, was uh, involved with the uh, freshman program, the three-dimensional design uh, program and the so-called sculpture program for most of these years. Uh, I very much liked teaching freshmen. They were really fresh. They were not afraid. They were not thinking about uh, what we call art career these days. Uh, and I noticed very early on, and I'm talking about more than 20 years ago, that uh, they were uh, not through their own fault, uh, somewhat unacquainted with dealing uh, in dealing with the third dimension. Uh, they were focused on either paper and later on almost exclusively on screens. And if you want to do something in three dimensions, that is a handicap. And so in the first semester, uh, I had them, uh, I gave rather strict assignments. Uh, I had them uh, build geometric and other uh, types of uh, uh, shaped uh, uh, objects uh, out of cardboard or other cheap materials. Uh, and we met regularly every week to look at uh, the results. Uh, in the second semester, things opened up. Uh, they were uh, invited to not only uh, make objects, but also consider that there is a space, there is an environment, there's an in, in, uh, they were thinking in terms of installations, but also, very importantly, that uh, they themselves, humans, people, uh, are part of our three-dimensional environment and needs to be, need to be uh, considered in structuring it. And so uh, uh, we, wound up occasionally in uh, performance uh, style uh, presentations inside the school, but also sometimes outside. In the following years, from the uh, uh, sophomore year on, uh, at Cooper, my colleagues in uh, sculpture and I, we agreed that uh, students should no longer be separated uh, by year, uh, by progress, by experience, and so forth, but that the sophomores, the juniors, and the seniors should all be in one class and uh, learn from each other and learn how to uh, speak to each other and deal with each other. And this is uh, something that both in the first year and throughout the four uh, years of the undergraduate program, uh, I insisted on, namely that we met and had communal uh, reviews of the students' work, that uh, they 
had to deal with each other, learn how to speak uh, uh, critically about each other's work, but in appropriate language, because this, as I thought, was not only important for the school environment, but uh, prepares them for a professional world outside, and for that matter, uh, how people uh, deal with each other in society. Uh, like my colleagues, uh, we also did not think uh, of sculpture as discrete objects, necessarily. So all sorts of things uh, in mixed media came, performances, uh, uh, interventions uh, in uh, uh, the school or elsewhere uh, became part of uh, uh, the, uh, uh, what we got to uh, talk about and see. And I uh, withheld my comments in, in these, uh, uh, my evaluations or comments to report, uh, say, use the same word again, uh, until the very end. I wanted them to engage in a discussion with each other. Uh, and I also wanted to avoid uh, prejudicing uh, the outcome. Uh, and uh, definitely, I didn't want to uh, make them follow a lead or become disciples of mine. During the discussion, of course, uh, uh, we, and, and I encouraged it, we talked about things that uh, uh, happened uh, Outside, uh, uh, I pointed out uh, uh, what uh, was done in the past, but also what is happening today, issues that uh, uh, one might uh, uh, consider, and uh, to bring, make them a, a, a larger and more uh, engaging uh, group rather than a singular individual uh, focused uh, person who uh, doesn't uh, take care of any social uh, environment and uh, uh, functioning uh, together with others. Now I should step out of the way because this is the one image that I chose to accompany uh, my presentation here. And I see I only a very on the top, you see uh, a banner, free education to all. This is, was put up there by students <laughs> who had occupied the, the space where the trustees meet and where the trustees were planning to in introduce tuition at Cooper Union, which had been uh, uh, tuition free for over 100 years. They occupied this uh, uh, space uh, for a week. Uh, when they finally came out, uh, Christmas came around, they were greeted by the art school faculty and the dean of the art school with roses. Each one of them got a rose. A second occupation occurred of the, the president's office uh, only half a year later, when indeed the trustees and the president introduced tuition. And it is important to recognize that the students who uh, took such uh, relatively drastic measures, namely occupying the president's office for uh, six weeks, did not do that because the tuition would hurt them. They would continue. Under, yeah. They uh, protested and tried to change the, the course of the school uh, for the next generation and the future. Uh, the faculty also got involved, and uh, two faculty members, one engineer, one from the art school, uh, an alumnus, and, a, uh, and two 
I'm getting close to the end. <laughs> to uh, future students, uh, filed a lawsuit, which was settled recently under pressure from uh, the Attorney General, uh, Schneiderman. Uh, the school was uh, had to be forced and was forced to uh, uh, have a financial monitor because it had mismanaged uh, its affairs. It had to uh, take uh, uh, students, faculty members, and alumni to be part of the board of trustees. And there is a chance that there is a future when I am at uh, Cooper these days. Uh, the settlement was signed in, in September. Everybody is having a, a sigh of relief, and they believe there is a future for free education. So backstage, we were talking about the notion of free education and how paid education oftentimes impacts the artistic process um, and, and development of ideas and, and how people actually live in the world. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Well, of course, it uh, affects uh, not only uh, uh, artists, uh, but uh, uh, for artists, it's, uh, there is a particular aspect. Uh, uh, I know that uh, so many of the artists who then go on to graduate school, mm -hmm. Columbia, Yale, and so forth, mm -hmm. have to pay huge uh, uh, fees and f then find themselves in uh, deep debt, which forces them almost, mm -hmm. unless they have uh, a private source of income, yeah. forces them to produce works that are attractive to, and I deliberately uh, now uh, spell it out, to investors. Mm -hmm. so, the, so the object or the creative process becomes driven by a consumer base rather than the ideas and issues that maybe the artist is most interested in? It becomes marketing to, a, and I repeat the term, investors. investors. because the, the number of collectors who really uh, get involved uh, because they love something and they want to live with it uh, is dwindling, at mm -hmm. least in comparison to what it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're running so woefully behind that we're going to see you again later. <laughs> Thank you.